This video shows how to upgrade a flex controller system to add a long range expansion board. If your controller came without an expansion board and you wish to expand your system, you can easily do so. The following steps will give you instructions on how to install this long range board appropriately. And there may be various different configurations that you have. In this particular case, we are just using a Hinx Pix Pro CPU. This could also be an Alpha Pix Evolution and a 16 output SPI board. Now, you may have two SPI boards uh, and then a CPU or just one. Now, the first thing we need to do is to remove the CPU. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove four screws. Um, they are located. Let's see here. They're located here, 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 and here. And these are just standard Phillips screws in most cases. If you have a very old model, it may in fact be little nuts, which are 5.5 millimeters, and you can remove those uh, with a nut driver. Okay, we've removed our CPU and carefully pull it back, and you can remove the ribbon cable from here. Now, this ribbon cable is shorter, so as we stack additional boards up, we need to put the shortest ribbon cable at the top. So what we're going to do is disconnect this ribbon cable and we're going to actually be installing a new one. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have the appropriate spacers. There are two types of spacers. There is a 30 millimeter and a 40 millimeter. And you can see the two sizes here. And so depending upon your particular unit, you may need to remove some 40 millimeter spacers and replace them with 30s. If you're using a CG1500, with two boards, you will need a 30 millimeter, a 30 millimeter, uh, and you'll need to replace that. In this particular case, we already have 30 millimeter spacers and we do not need to replace them. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, configure our ribbon cable. Now this ribbon cable does not plug into each board. It's one ribbon cable per board. And this ribbon cable is designed to be cut. So when we stack these boards, we're going to stack the long range here, and then we're going to put additional spacers and then this on top. This cable length needs to connect all the way to the bottom. So in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut it so that it's on the longer of the two. We could cut it here and right along here and end up with a shorter section or here and end up with this longer section. So what we're going to do is going to cut it so that it's longer. All I'm going to do is take my ribbon cable and I'm going to cut off the excess amount. So we're going to be leaving these three connectors in here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it like that. All right. So now I have a ribbon cable that has three connectors. We are only going to use the end ribbon cables. I'm going to then plug that in here. And it is keyed. There is a notch, and the notch faces to the front of the board. So just plug that into the ribbon plug or IDC connector and make sure that it's fully seated. You can then set this back. The next thing you need to do is you need to install the next board. Again, I have assumed that you've already put in any additional or reduction spacers. You may again need to make this from 40 to 30. I'm going to put my long range expansion board and that's identified by of course the red jacks here. And I'm also going to take some additional 30 millimeter spacers here and I'm going to put those in here. I'm just going to finger tighten these. And then I am going to use a pair of regular pliers and just there's no need to pull too heavily on this. Just give them a snug so that they don't loosen up. Just give them a little bit of a turn so they're a little bit more than finger tight. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is get power to this unit. So what we need to do is hook up our wires. Uh, this likely was included into your kit, a red and a black wire. And the red wires are going to be in the back and they're marked with DC positive. So I'm gonna use my Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to loosen up the screw, push the wire underneath the screw terminal, screw it down. Don't screw too hard because it could pull off the connector if pulled too hard. I'm gonna loosen up my ground or black wire and I'm going to slide that underneath and screw that down. Now I'm going to 
gain power from my other board. Normally you're going to be adding this to an existing board, so either you're going to jumper from an existing long range that's below it, so you would come down and go to the bottom one, you would need to do that before you put this board in, or you can jumper from the existing power in this SPI board. So I'm gonna loosen up my red, and I'm going to slide my red positive power on the other side of this terminal. So I have one coming in from the power supply and one coming in, going out to the long range. I'm going to tighten that down. Again, I'm going to loosen up the next one. And it doesn't matter which ones, as long as you've got them matched up and that the voltage uh, positive negative is correct. Okay, so now we have attached our power cable so that we're getting power to our long range board. Now, the cable that we used on the original board, we're going to now move it up and it's going to go into place on instead of the one that was on the bottom. So we're moving it up top to the now the long range. You can see that. And so you'll see that this is a little bit shorter than that one because this is going to go to the front connector. Now we're going to reseat our CPU. Again, just uh, four screws. I'm going to put in just two for brevity here. And you're now set. Now we need to set our ribbon cables. Now, depending upon the way your controller came configured, you may need to move these um, to the very bottom, moving up, or from the top, moving down. So if you already have a configuration that has the SPI that was in the output number one or port number one, uh, this would be one through 16. 17 through 32 and 33 through 48. Uh, you can actually put them anywhere. Uh, most likely you will need to do a reconfiguration of a controller because when it comes up, it will have moved the SPI down. In the future, you'll likely see that the boards all start at the bottom and move their way up. So in this particular case, I'm gonna put the long range at the top uh, and then I'm going to put the SPI board in the middle and that will make the long range 1 through 16 ports and the SPI board down here at the bottom as 17 through 32 and we won't be using this uh, 33 through 48 because this is in an enclosure that doesn't allow for that particular design and you are now set. Again, you will need to reconfigure your controller. You may need to move your settings so that the were on 1 through 16, for example, down to uh, 17 through 32, or 17 through 32 down to 48 through, uh, 7, 33 through 48. So some configuration is going to be most likely required uh, after this addition. Uh, you are now set, and when it's powered up, what you should see is, let's see if we can get this unit powered up, You'll see that the controller comes on and you will see a power light right here indicating that the receiver is powered up just like there is a power light here for the SPI. If so, you're all set to go. If your controller boots up, you usually should see how many. In this case, it says 32 because there's 16 here and 16 for the long range and you are all set.